All right, what is up tycoons? What's up traders? Super excited for today's video. We're going to go over the seven best asset classes to hedge against inflation. Now, the reason we're making this video is because inflation is still a pretty big topic in the market and in the economy today. Even though we have seen a decline in inflation here recently, as noted by these two graphs right over here, we have the purple line is regular inflation and the orange is core inflation. You can see it has finally started to come down but the Fed has recently added $300 billion to their balance sheet, and they've been bailing out some of these banks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the different asset classes that you guys can use to hedge against inflation. So make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and we're going to jump straight into it. Now, inflation is a rise in an economy's overall average price level and a decline in the purchasing power of that economy's domestic currency. Core inflation measures changes in the overall price level minus food and energy costs. And this is something that Powell is a, very focused on is the core inflation numbers minus food and energy, right? Those tend to be uh, more volatile. Now, it's important to note that inflation affects more than just the price of consumer goods as measured by the consumer price index. Nearly every asset class can take a hit from inflation in one way or another, while rising prices can be a sign of economic growth translating it into higher corporate earnings and elevated stock prices, it is a double-edged sword. Historically, rapid inflation prompts central banks to hike interest rates to control one array of prices. Bond yields rise, causing prices to fall. Future corporate earnings are discounted further while equities sell off, and any adjustable rate credit product becomes more expensive. If inflation makes you queasy, then you're in the right place. Now, here are seven of the best ways to hedge your portfolio against inflation. You have XUS ETFs and mutual funds. You have defensive stocks, bonds, including tips. You have foreign currencies, commodities, including gold and precious metals. You have real estate, as well as cryptocurrencies. Now, of course, none of this video is financial advice, guys. Rather, you know, this is just some free educational and information that you guys can use to, you know, help make any further decisions. Of course, consult with a financial advisor before making any investments. Now, number one on here is going to be ex-US ETFs and mutual funds. Inflation is typically regarded as a negative for stocks as it increases companies' borrowing and production costs, further discounts future earnings, and ultimately leads to lower expected earnings growth. If the earnings of U.S. companies are expected to shrink, investments that exclude domestic companies, i.e. these are the, your ex-U.S. funds, they can hedge a predominantly U.S. portfolio and capture potential returns from worldwide markets where inflation may not be as high. Now, some examples would be uh, ticker symbol VEU. You have SPDW, ACWX, CWY, right? Those are some ex-U.S. ETFs. Now, when it comes to XUS mutual funds, there's FSGGX, we have VFWAX, and SSGVX. Now, per theory of diversification, the less correlated two investments are, the more they can protect investors from downside risk. A portfolio's overall volatility can be potentially limited by expanding the variety of investments in a portfolio. While diversification is typically approached in terms of asset classes, it also applies geographically. In this case, increasing exposure outside of the U.S. could reduce home country bias and make for an effective hedge against domestic inflation. Now, number two is going to be defensive stocks. Right Through rising, uh, inflation has historically led to Fed rate hikes, which can stimmy stock market returns. Certain sectors act as a counter to higher inflation since they tend to appreciate in times such as these. Materials, consumer staples, and utilities are examples of lower volatility sectors that defensive investors often rotate into. When both inflation and the prices of raw material rise, material stocks have followed upward as well. As for consumer staples, many of the companies in that sector are considered recession-proof. Think of household products, personal care items, and groceries. No matter if inflation is 1% or 10%, everyone will need to eat, do the dishes, and brush their teeth, right? Therefore, consider uh, consumer staple companies are favored by investors seeking protection from inflation. Since they are thought to deliver consistent earnings with lower volatility, no matter the current economic environment. Finally, the merits of the utility sector in an inflationary environment include the average stock in that sector sporting the third highest dividend and lowest beta of the 11 sectors. Utility stocks are often viewed as sort of a bond hybrid sporting the risk-off elements of fixed-income instruments with the ability to generate current income via dividends. 
And similar to consumer staples, many utility companies are considered recession proof as people depend on powering and heating their homes. And here we can take a look and we have the U.S. inflation right here. All right. And over here we have XLB, uh, material select sector. We have the consumer staples uh, sector, XLP. And then we have the utility sector, XLU. All right. And we can see that, you know, uh, that these tend to trend with inflation. Right. So when inflation goes up, you tend to see these going up. All right. And, um, you know, these have been safe havens throughout the 2022 bear market. Um, these, you know, some of these defensive stock sectors. Right. Um, here we have um, a little bit more zoomed in. All right. We have XLB, we have XLP and XLU. We have uh, utilities, staples and materials right here. And this is their beta. OK, so this is the level of beta. Uh, and you can see their beta levels right through here. All right. At the time of this recording, uh, the materials was uh, 1.099. We have 0 0.560 for the XLP, which is consumer staples. And then XLU is about 0.541. That is the utilities sector. Now, the third option is going to be bonds, including tips. All right. The Fed's open market committee, which is the FOMC, they hike the Fed funds rate as a means to control inflation, leading to higher interest rates across all fixed income durations. During inflationary periods, investors might consider expanding their fixed income positions as higher risk-free returns make bonds more attractive compared to risky assets such as equities. But be aware, timing is everything. Purchasing bonds after markets have priced in a rate hike is one thing, but buying them before a rate hike occurs might lead to depreciated value of these bonds. Treasury yields are typically one of the biggest beneficiaries during rate hikes as seen most recently in 2016 and now 2023. And so this gives you an idea of, you know, kind of how the bonds work, right? So we have the effective federal funds right here, and you can see they start increasing in 2016. And you can see the one-year treasury rate start to go up. We have the 10-year right here also start to go up a little bit. We have the 30-year kind of remains flat, but does see an, a, a little bit of a spike after um, 2016. And, you know, the inflation rate as well right here, according to all of these. Now here, inflation spiked out of control Right. And a lot of the treasury yields had a very sharp rise due to the Fed funds rate increasing so much in 2022. So, you know, you can go to the one year treasury, right? And you can get a one year treasury and you were able to get a very nice yield on it. And these are considered risk free um, because the government is guaranteeing these returns essentially if you hold them to maturity. Now, treasury inflation protected securities, which are TIPS, those are fixed income instruments similar to treasury bonds but they're specifically designed to protect against inflation. Just as treasuries fluctuate based on interest rates, TIPS principal values appreciate when inflation rises. During inflationary periods, TIPS can provide added returns and protection to a portfolio if or when equity prices dive. TIPS are available in five, 10 year and 30 year durations. Now, number four here is going to be foreign currencies. Quick word from today's sponsor, Upside. Speaking of inflation, did you guys know that an average American spends between $150 to $200 on gas every month? It, of course, varies and depends on the state, lifestyle, and driving habits, but American families spend approximately $5,000 on gas annually, which is almost 2.24% of their income. So what you guys can do is you can download Upside and you can get cash back on your everyday purchases. If you use code RCQ599, you can also get an additional cashback bonuses on your cashback rewards. And you can earn cashback at over 50,000 locations. So remember, use code RCQ599 and you can get an additional 15 cents per gallon when you download the app and use my code RCQ599. All right, savings are calling, guys. Um, a lot of people are saying 2023, there's going to be a recession. There could be a recession in 2024. So start saving, find any extra ways that you guys can use to, you know, earn some extra money and start saving that upside is a great way to do that. It's something that I personally use to get cash back on over 50,000 locations. Now, it also works at more than just gas stations and for gas. Um, there's many restaurants as well that give you cash back bonuses and even some convenience in grocery stores in select areas. So use code RCQ599 to get an additional 15 cents uh, per gallon back whenever you join and use my code. 
and there's a variety of options. So you can choose your payment, whether you want it deposited directly to your bank account, okay? Or if you want something like a gift card, they have Nike right here, they have Target, it's very popular, okay? You can make your wife very happy by giving her a Target gift card. She's gonna be ecstatic and go spend it on something that you guys probably don't need, but at least it didn't cost you anything and it was just simply with your cash back rewards, okay? You can also get AMC theater gift cards. So maybe you guys wanna go see movies once a month, right? Uh, once or twice a month. This is a way where you can get tickets for free by using your cash back rewards, choosing your payment as an AMC gift card, and using that gift card to go ahead and watch some movies, right? There's supposed to be a lot of good movies coming out this year. And this could be a way to help you guys go ahead and see some more. So remember, use code RCQ599 and download the Upside uh, app today. Using that code will get you an additional 15 cents per gallon back. Now, back to today's video. Inflation not only decreases a currency's purchasing power domestically, it can also weaken a currency compared to other countries' tenders. A weaker exchange rate can stimulate activity from foreign buyers. For example, as recently as last year, the US dollar and euro were at parity for the first time in 20 years, making that long-awaited trip overseas less expensive. On the flip side, holders of the weakened currency are at a disadvantage when purchasing from foreign nations. For instance, the U.S. dollar experienced relative weakness against the pound, Canadian dollar, euro, and Australian dollar from March 2020 through the first half of 2021, partially due to rising inflation. But as inflation hit the rest of the world in 2022, the U.S. dollar strengthened once again. The Japanese yen has often been regarded as a safe haven for U.S. dollar holders in times of economic uncertainty. Japan's historically steady economic growth and inflation rate have resulted in tame exchange rate fluctuations, providing a hedge against the inflation-induced devaluation of the dollar. And over here, we can take a look uh, at some of the different currencies uh, that there are. If you take a look, we have the inflation rate here on the top. All right, we have uh, the British pound to U.S. dollar exchange rate. Canadian dollar to U.S. exchange rate, the euro to U.S. dollar, Australian dollar, we have U.S. GDP, we have the U.S. inflation rate, all right, and then we have uh, Japan GDP right here, Japan's inflation rate, and the U.S. dollar to Japanese yen exchange rate. And you can see here that there was a spike in 2022, uh, and this is why they mentioned that, you know, the Japanese yen is kind of a, uh, considered a hedge um, to people holding the U.S. dollar in times of economic uncertainty. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is gold, precious metals, and commodities. All that glitters is gold, especially during times of inflation. Precious metals such as gold have been historical favorites for hedging against inflation due to their scarcity, uh, scarcity, tangibility, and historically negative correlation to paper money. Since 1979, the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has declined by 77%. Meanwhile, the price of gold per ounce has risen more than 700% and is close to breaking through $2,000 per ounce for the second time ever. In addition to owning physical gold, investors can consider adding gold miners, ETFs, or even currency hedged gold funds to their portfolios to stay golden through inflation. Some of these plays include GLD, which I recently traded here soon and uh, or recently and was able to make some nice profits trading GLD. Um, there is the iShares Gold Trust, which is IAU. You have GDX, which is the VanEck Vectors Gold Miners ETF. And there's also SGOL, which is the Aberdeen Standard Gold ETF. Now, these are just a few options. There are many other options you guys can research about. Other tangible assets include commodities such as oil, lumber, and steel, whose prices not only increase with inflation, but also act as indicators of both future inflation and economic growth. And the energy sector, XLE, did very, very well in the year of 2022 compared to something like tech. Now, as the economy expands, the demand for commodities heats up, pushing their prices higher. And what we have here is the U.S. inflation rate, right? We have the gold price in U.S. dollars. Uh, we also have the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, right? Purchasing power of the consumer dollar. And we can see that it's gone down very much. Uh, here is the U.S. inflation rate right here again. WTI crude oil. This is the spot price of crude oil. Uh, we have lumber and wood products right here, according to the CPI. And then we also have iron and steel mills, according to, C, uh, to the PPI, the producer price index. Okay. And the next one we're going to look at is real estate. Now, like precious metals, real estate is a tangible asset that tends to hold value during prevalent inflation. As prices rise, so do property values and rents. 
increasing the amount of rental income earned along with the book value of property. Existing homeowners may actually welcome inflation as it translates to more valuable equity. As seen in the chart above, the U.S. existing home median sales price saw a surge in prices as inflation rose in 2022, but then it started to level off as inflation fell. And you can see that over here. We have the inflation here in purple, U.S. existing home median sales price, and you can see that they're very closely correlated here. Um, you know, when, when these started to go up, right, you can see that also the median sales price has fallen with the inflation rate here recently in more recent times. Now, alternatively, the benefits of owning actual real estate can be captured by adding real estate investment trust holdings to a portfolio. These are known as REITs. REITs typically operate conglomerates of real estate and are investor owned. Those investors receive distributions on the REITs rental income, interest, and property sales. There are hundreds of REIT equities, ETFs, and mutual funds. In addition to general real estate sector securities, such as the SPDR Select Real Estate Sector ETF, which is XLRE. Our last one here is going to be cryptocurrencies. Those who wish to diversify out of fiat currencies entirely might seek alternative stores of value. Uh, we saw a really big spike in the price of Bitcoin here uh, when a lot of these uh, bank collapses started happening and a lot of this bank crisis. And a lot of people just have some fears uh, and looking for, you know, alternative things and alternative ways to get out of regular fiat currency. Uh, one emerging asset class, crypto, includes digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano. While a tumultuous 2022 has prompted some to question the reliability of cryptocurrencies as inflation hedges, a price rebound at the start of 2023 and decentralized store of monetary value is helping crypto regain popularity. U.S. investors can join the crypto craze by owning coins directly, or you can buy shares in crypto trusts or ETFs. Uh, a few different crypto trusts or ETFs would be GBTC, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. You have the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, which is ETHE. You also have the Grayscale Zcash Trust, ZCSH, and the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, BITO, B-I-T-O. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit more about inflation and the seven different asset classes that you can use to hedge yourself against inflation. Of course, do some more research on these. Uh, you don't have to get into all seven of these. Uh, I'm not suggesting to get into all seven of these, but rather just trying to provide some good information for you guys so that way you can research furthermore and decide if any of these asset classes could be something that you are looking at as a possible hedge in the future against inflation in case it comes screaming back with a vengeance six months to a year from now as the Fed has went from quantitative easing and now they are actually adding hundreds of billions of dollars back to their balance sheet. Um, so nobody knows exactly how that will turn out. It's best to always hedge yourself. And as I mentioned, these are seven different ways that you can hedge yourself.